Okay, good morning. Good morning. How's everybody doing today? Good. Good. Yeah, I'm good. All right. So uh, we're running in on our midterm, which will be the two chapters we've already covered, plus the little bit we're covering. We covered yesterday, and then I'll finish up today. So, uh, anybody got any particular questions about anything we've done so far? Hey, I do have a question. Um, do we uh, meet up tomorrow at the same time? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, we don't have a break until uh, Thursday, July 4th. Okay. So, provided something doesn't happen to me, we will be here four days a week until that uh, 4th. Yeah, uh, it's a review day, so... We're... All right, well, let's just go over the book, see if we get into any trouble over there, figure out some stuff. Um, so yesterday, we talked a little bit about the factorials. Is anybody still having trouble with uh, putting those in with that calculator? I figured mine out. Okay. I didn't. Can we go over it again? Because that's the one when you say... Um... You got to use parentheses, right? okay? And uh, yeah. on your calculator, because here's the thing: is we're evaluating fractions here, so um, so all I can show you is on this because uh, I can't. Let's see something. Let's see if they've got a example we can look at. All right. Let's see if they got something. Uh, well, let's just look at this little video and see if it tells us anything. Like I said, it is. I don't have one that I can show you because I've got a physical one, but getting it on the screen is another matter. Many students ask me how to use their calculators to get the factorial of a number. This question comes most commonly from students who have a TI-30 series calculator. Usually either the TI-30X or the TI-30X2S as shown here. This is a great question. You would think the calculator has a button to calculate the factorial, but you can't seem to find it. Well, the button is well hidden under the probability key. Look for a key on your calculator that says PRB. You should be able to see it here. Press the PRB button and you will see three choices as shown on the screens here, depending on the model of your calculator. The first choice is the permutations, the second choice is the combinations, and the third choice is what we want for factorial. When you first press the probability key, the first choice for permutation is either highlighted on the left or underlined as you see on the right. Since we want to use factorial, press the directional arrow keys to move the highlight or the underline so that it is selecting the factorial symbol. Now to use the factorial function, first exit the screen by pressing the clear key. Let's say we want to calculate phi factorial. Phi factorial is five times four times three times two times one, which is 120. Let's see how this is done on the calculator. First, make sure that you press the clear key so that the screen is blank. Then type in the number you want to use, in this case, 5. Then press the PRB button. And then you can see the choices, and let's use the directional key. Permutation is highlighted here. So let's use the down arrow key, the directional down. Now combination is highlighted. 
one more down and you have the factorial piece highlighted. Now press enter to select that choice. So now we have five factorial. And now you have to press enter a second time. Now we have one All right, so that's basically all it is for putting in uh, is that directional key, the arrow key to choose one of those after you hit the PRB. Does that help a bit? Um, see, if you got something... Let's just uh, go back to one of those. I know they got these in here. Just saw them. See, with something like this, like number, um, eighteen. See, the the drawback is the calculator might not input it correctly. So what I would do is just I would use parentheses. So like for the top, put the eight factorial times five factorial, close your parentheses, hit your divide. Well, your divide is just a line like that on the TI and then do the parentheses again. This is the way you're gonna to have to do it in the TI if you've got one of these double ones. Okay, and if you do that, then I'll show you on that little calculator here that it will do the same thing. But on that TI, it's you read horizontal like that. That's why you have to um, use the parentheses. Oop. Bring this up and get that little calculator. So for this, like I said, it is you got to use parentheses to get it to work, or that's the safe thing to do. See, then that way when I divide, it's gonna divide the whole thing and not just the five factorial. You don't really need them down. Uh, on yours, you would need to do them. So go ahead and do your parentheses. See, and then if we hit equal, then we got the final evaluation to that. Now, thankfully, there's not too many of those that are double. So that's the way you should do it with a TI to make sure that you're dividing numerator, full numerator by denominator. Because by default, if you were to just do um, not do the parentheses, then it'll calculate eight factorial and then do five factorial divided by three factorial, then multiply the six factorial. And in, uh, like I said, is you got to use the parentheses to make sure the order of operations goes right. So uh, let's see uh, what else we can do.
So the first thing that we had looked at yesterday for the permutations or the first formula other than the factorial formula, the factorial formula is just picking one at a time. It's what it is. And over time, I like that book example about you got seven books and you're putting each one on the shelf. How many different ways is it? That's a straight factorial problem. The permutation uses factorials. But what's distinct about the permutation formula that we have here is this is out of n objects. In other words, there's a basket full. We're picking the handful R at a time. And if we do that, we go in there and we pull out a handful from that huge bag. How many different ways can we do it? All right. Let's just look at a couple of problems. So this is... Uh, So how many six-letter pa uh, six passwords are there that use only lowercase letters with no letters repeated? So what we got to glean from this is there are 26 lowercase letters, A through Z. And then if we do it to uppercase, that would be another 26. So we're only using the 26 here. And then our handful, our R, is 6. Okay? So put in the 26. On your TI, you go uh, PRB, and then it'll be the one that's chosen. Um by default, it's got the PRB, the, the P chosen, and then put in the six. So there we go. So that's 165,765,600 different ways to choose a six letter password. They showed how to do it on a graphing calculator. Now it um, says, it says with no um, letters repeated. What if it said with? Well, by definition, the permutations is no letters repeated. Okay. okay? That's okay. the that's the nature of the permutation. No repetition. That's what they mean by without replacement. See that? In other words, when we take something out, it's gone. We don't use it again. No repetition. Okay. So by definition or just in general, permutations and combinations, which we're going to see, there is no repetition. And that's not to be confused with this, when objects are alike, like uh, I had done that problem at the end with Alabama. There were four A's, nothing else repeats. There were, I think there's a le uh, seven letters in Alabama or whatever. So four of them repeat. So this is the way we handle that. There's no key for it. So I'm just gonna kind of set it up and show it, okay. This is one of the ones I got on my uh, notes in there. And this is a good one because of the fact that Mississippi's got several letters that repeat. It has uh, 11 letters total. Uh, the M doesn't repeat. The I repeats four times. They call it K2, just like they call MK1. But the one we need to be worried about is that four, okay? The uh, S is repeat, and that's also a four. P's repeat, and there's two of them. 
All right. Now, in order to be consistent, they also put the one factorial down there, but one factorial is just one. Okay. So one factorial is just one. So it doesn't really, uh, there's no benefit to putting it down there, but it doesn't hurt to put it down there to be consistent. So um, we can handle this. I'm going to go ahead and do it by hand just to show you that it can be. So that's 11 times 10 times 9 times 8. All right, so down at the bottom, we've got a, a four factorial. So that's, I'll tell you what, I'm gonna go ahead and put that here for, just so you can see it go away. So this is four factorial. Another four factorial down there, and then there's a two factorial, and all these are multiplied. Now, because they're common factors top to bottom in a fraction, we can take those out. Now, four factorial are those right there, so that takes one of them out. So, what do we got left? We've got 11 times 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5. And that's all that's left up there because we got the 4, 3, 2, and 1 going. And then down here, it's another 4 factorial, and I can just write it out. And then there's the two factorial, which is just two times one. Now, I can take all of those out, and they will be guaranteed to evenly divide out, and I'm going to be left with a whole number. What do I mean by that? We'll watch. All right. So uh, two times three is six. So that's one, and that's one. Four times two is eight. We can take that one out and that one out. All we're left with then is ones. So then what we've got is 11 times 10 times nine times seven times six. Oops, times five. And that's it. What would that be? Hit my calculator here. So this is uh, thirty-four thousand six hundred and fifty different ways. Okay. I'll do this one in the next class. I'm going to go over and uh, now look at the next little section. So we're just simplifying fractions is what it amounts to. And it always comes down to a whole number. You'll never have a fractional amount because what this represents is the number of ways to do something. So it will always be a whole number. It does not matter which way you take those uh, common factors out. You can take them out usually more than one way. Because we could have taken the four out of the eight the three out of the six, and then the two out of the 10, and then the two out of another even one. And you know what? Multiply out, we've still got 34,650. 
All right. So now uh, in this next section, we're looking at this thing called a combination. Now, combination is where order does not matter. Here, order does not matter. And you may be thinking, well, why would order not matter? Isn't order important? Well, there are some situations where order is not an issue. If you look at the lottery, when the state has a drawing and they pull their five numbers out of the machine, we can match those numbers in any order. The order doesn't matter. We just have to have those five numbers. Because the truth of the matter is, if we had to get them in that order, nobody would ever win because there's a lot more of them when we got to order them. All right. So uh, I'll just do one of these by hand and I'll, um, just to kind of show you here. All right. So this one right here. Hold on a second. Let me just uh, make the point before we go on and work something. So we got to decide whether order is important or not. So a passcode, we got to put it in in the order in which it was originally devised. In other words, if you're... Uh, passcode is your zip code you can't put it in in just any order it's got to be 70114 or whatever your zip code is for a combination the order is not important so a gardener picks four uh, vegetable plants for his garden from 10 choices so he goes over to Lowe's goes through the the uh, garden section and pulls out four plants there's 10 total but there's four that he chooses and now how many different ways can we do it? Well, the formula is slightly different because it has an extra R factorial in the denominator. The permutation has only N minus R factorial. The combination has the extra R factorial. And what that's gonna do is it's going to take out some of the possibilities. Because if order's not important, then we don't need those in which order is an issue. <coughs> All, right. <coughs> All right, an instructor posts a list of <coughs> eight group projects. Every group <clears throat> is required to do four projects. All right, so we got to do this because there's no order. You just got to do four of them. <clears throat> so here. Is our eight, and there's our four. All right, so that's going to be eight factorial up here, and down here, eight minus four factorial. And then for the combinations, we've got the extra four factorial down there. All right. So then uh, what this ends up being is it ends up being eight factorial over four factorial, four factorial. All right. So that's what this ends up being. Once we simplify, the eight factorial stays alone. 
8 minus 4, the difference is 4 factorial, and then the extra R factorial down there. So now we can evaluate this any way we want to. We can use the calculator. We can do by hand. It's always good to have an alternate method to check. <clears throat> All right. So this is going to be up here. Eight times eight times seven times six times five times four factorial. So the four would keep on going. And then we got two down there. All right, so one of the fact four factorials is gone. Doesn't matter which one. So then what we got left? Eight times seven times six times five down up at the top. And then down here we got four times three times two times one. That's the four fact the other fact four, four factorial. Okay. So now we're just going to whittle them out. Take out the common factors top to bottom. All right. <clears throat> So as I said, you can take these out any way we want, as long as they're divisors. So 4 goes into 8 twice. 3 goes into 6 twice. So these are 1s now. And then we can take out either one of the 2s. It doesn't matter which one. 2 goes into 2 one time. So now we're left with so that should be what it is. So let's say uh, 14 times 5 So 70 different ways. All right. So let's just check and see if I did that right. Let's use that um, balance calculator. All right. So I'm going to put in the 8. No matter which one calculator you're using, the big number's got to go in first. Then we hit the... Uh, C now, and then we're going four, and there's your 70. Okay, so there's more than one way to do it. I highly recommend taking a different tack each time so that you can pair, compare your answers. So combinations. And then like I said, yes, we this is our uh, the official book that they use in 120. We're taking uh, Newton this summer, but and uh, in this textbook, they push the graphing calculator and we don't use the graphing calculator for the freshman math. Um, we use it in statistics and uh, trigonometry, but not for this class. But it's very similar. All right. So anytime you got a committee and there's no mention of uh, offices or anything like that, which is what this one is, I 
at one school, the student government consists of seven women and five men. So you got 12 people. How many different uh, committees can be chosen with three women and two men? Three women and two men. All right. Now, we got two different things to answer here. All right. First of all, we got to find out the number of ways to pick three men. Okay. So there's your three. I'm sorry, your three women. Three women. So there's seven men, women. Okay. There's your ends for your numerator. All right. So, so this is N, N, and R, the three. Now, the big 12, the big R, uh, I'm sorry, the big N, All right, and I'm going to use that one in the denominator because that's all of them. So what this ends up being is <clears throat> multiply. So this is the women, and then here's the men. And then in the denominator, it's all. So we're picking uh, how many? We're picking So this is pick five from 12. Now these are pretty uh, common, these ones when you got the committees and you've got wanna specify two different types. Like I said, in this case, it's women and men. Well, in the numerator, see it's N, so we multiply those two. And in the denominator is the number of total ways to do this, blindly pick five, out of 12. All right. Hold on a second. So uh, calculator is a good thing to use this. So again, you got to use parentheses for that numerator. So uh, you do it sort of like this. So you got to have your parentheses. So open up parentheses. And then we're going to have seven. And we're going to hit the. So it's uh, seven, three, and then we've got the uh, men, which was five, C two, and now here's the what, here's the problem you're going to run into trouble with the with the. Uh, 
TI especially. It's the same thing here, but watch what happens if I hit divide. See how it only divides the one? So uh, what I should have done is this. Just make one set of parentheses, and that should do it. Now, when I hit divide, see, it divides the whole thing. That's what you got to make sure is happening on your calculator, and that's what you use the parentheses for. And then we hit equal. Oh, what happened? It must have not have done what I thought it was going to do. I'll tell you what. Let's do it piecemeal just to make sure. All right. So 350. Oh, you know what? This isn't probability. Okay, I'm, I apologize. We don't really need the denominator here. This is for, I'm thinking about probability. We're not doing probability yet. We'll do that after midterm on these. So it just needs to know the number of ways. So... There we go, 350. Digging too deep here. So 350 different ways. All right, so uh, on an exam, a student has to pick two essay questions from six and 10 multiple cho uh, choice questions from 20. All right, so that's what this is going to be. It's going to be... Essay two from six and then uh, ten from twenty. So it just wants to know the number of ways that we're not doing probability. Okay, so. So six, C, two, times 20, C, 10. So two million, All right, John, okay. All right, let's look at this one with the calendar. We got a few more minutes, and I'm gonna let you hop on that little assignment again. I made it shorter <laughs> this time. I know last time I messed up because I meant to break it into two, and I broke it into two. I just didn't take the ones out of the one you did yesterday. I'm gonna drop several of these, so it's just something to give you a good uh, participation grade, something to do in class. All right. So to raise money for a charity event, a sorority plans to sell a calendar featuring tasteful pictures of some of the more attractive professors on campus. They will need to choose six models from a pool of finalists that includes nine women uh, and six men. How many possible choices of if they want to feature at least four women? All right. So uh, they would get the, just the different um, scenarios. We got to have uh, at least four women. So that means we got to have four women and two men, because remember, it's nine women, six men, and we're choosing six models. So in order to add up to six, we can have four 
and two. So the four comes from the nine women. The two comes from the six men. So whittling it all out, we get 1,890. Five women and one man. So five out of nine now, and the one man comes from six. And then six women and no men. All right, so um, six from nine is 84. And then uh, there's only one way to pick nine out of six. It's one if you do that. Because this ends up being just six factorial over six factorial, which is just one way to do that. And then you add them all up. All right. Uh, I may just try to set this one up real quick. So this one's just got two, like that one does, three. So we got to have at least two Russians. So uh, how many are we picking? Four person. All right, so then uh, so two Russians out of 12. And then if we uh, put in the Americans, then the two would come from 10. So this is one way to do it. That's if we got two. Let's do it with uh, three Russians. So if we got three Russians, then we only need one American. So there's your second way to do it. And then the last one is... Uh, Four Russians. And then this one would be zero. And then we can just toss it into the uh, calculator. See if I can do it all at once. All right, so uh, 12, two, So that's twenty nine seventy. So the first one would be the twenty nine seventy one. I'm going to just do them all three of them and then we'll come back. Ten. And then uh, times 10 o c one uh, So you got to watch this with this calculator. Uh, you got to scoot over before you multiply. That's one of the drawbacks about calculators. You got to understand how they read stuff. So then this one is uh, 1,200 times and 
And then the last one is 12 C four. And then this one is one. So there's our answer. All right, so you should be able to work on that thing now. You can have the rest of class. If you got any questions, ask me, and I'll be glad to go over it. Because during this time period, I mean, I want us to be able to just have a good time for the most part. I'm not trying to punish you too much. All right. All right, so... Uh, It should be this one, like evaluation or in-class assignment three. Actually, it's in-class assignment four. Let me put a four there. So that one should be available. So again, just to recap. If it's ordered, there will be some mention of what the order is. So on that problem that uh, Tori gave us, it says choose three offices, president, vice president, treasurer. That's the order. They are not indistinguishable from one another. But if we choose a committee of three people and we mention nothing about the nature of them, then we use combinations because there's no order. All right, anybody got anything else? Any other stuff, questions? All right, so that's pretty much all the stuff I'm going to go over this part. So in the second part today, I'll uh, start with that uh, repeated things like the Mississippi problem, although I'll probably use Massachusetts and uh, show you how it works like that. That's probably the messiest one. And really the problems that you get are not that bad. It's just you got to remember, put all the repetitions downstairs with the factorial and then divide them out from the big number factorial.
All right. So uh, if you don't have any questions, if you're done, you can head out. I'll see you at the bottom of the hour. Otherwise, I'm going to stick around here for anybody that needs anything. <laughs>